No. No. Absolutely not. Yes. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Jessica. Today we will be making a recipe that comes from the Croc cookbook, which is only available in our kitchen. <laughs> uh, it is a recipe that comes from before we made the switch to our whole food plant-based diet, uh, but we adapted it to fit our whole food plant-based lifestyle. So today we will be making stuffed peppers. Yes. They're a kind of Mexican-inspired stuffed yeah. pepper. Um, we use some taco seasoning and that kind of stuff. And you can see we have all these weird papers <laughs> and things here. So this is how all our additional recipes, notes. this is behind the scenes. This is how our recipes come together. We so started with an idea. We start with an idea. We have different pieces of paper. We have notes. We have multiple kinds of tomato sauce that we've made. It's, it, there's so many notes on here. So my job after we get done filming this is going to be to take all of this and compile it into something on our website that you guys can read as an actual recipe. Uh, because we do put all the recipes up there so you can print them out from our website, crocsinthekitchen.com, in case you did not know. Yep. But I think that is enough chatter, so let's get to the recipe. Let's do it. First preheat your oven to 425, then we can get started prepping the vegetables. First, chop off the tops of your peppers and remove the seeds. You will want to keep the tops of the peppers because we will use those in the filling, so do not throw them away. We found some peef-sized peppers, so we decided to make some for him too. Just do the same thing to those if you happen to want to make peef-sized peppers too. Place all of your peppers on a baking tray that has been lined with either parchment paper or a silicone baking mat and set them aside. Next, we're going to prep the jalapenos, chop off the top, cut them down the middle, and scoop out the inside. Please be careful with jalapenos. Do not touch your eye afterwards, because it'll hurt. How do you know about that? Uh, don't ask questions, Jessica. Next, we wanted to get a nice fine dice for everything, so it's roughly the same size. So we used one of our vegetable choppers here for all of our vegetables. In our blog post, you can find a link to purchase a similar product. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this one, but it is nice because it makes everything very uniform. Next, you will need some brown rice. We have some leftover from the batch cook that we do. Make sure that your rice is cooked before you add it into the mixture, or else it will not cook in time. Then we have two bags of frozen rice cauliflower along with two cans of black beans. We use the no salt added version from Whole Foods and make sure you drain and rinse them before adding them. And finally, we have some frozen corn just to add in a little bit of sweetness. Put your peppers into the oven and set your timer for 20 minutes, then we can get started on the filling. In a large pot set to medium, add in your onion, your bell pepper, your mushrooms, and your jalapeno. Cook them for about five minutes until they are soft and the mushrooms have started to release their liquid. If you were going to add salt, now would be the time to add it to help release some extra moisture. Once the mushrooms have released their liquid, you can go ahead and add in your taco seasoning. We like to use Mrs. Wages no salt added packets. This is the roasted bell pepper and garlic taco. If you don't have this or can't find it, you can use your favorite taco seasoning mix or you can make your own. But as always, I do have a link to where you can buy this in the blog post linked below. Next, add in the tomato paste. That is just one whole can right in there. And we added in two teaspoons of undiluted better than bouillon. If you don't have better than bouillon, it's probably best to just omit it and not add in veggie stock because it'll just make this very watery and it will not come out very nice. Next, go ahead and add in the riced cauliflower, your brown rice, beans, and corn. Yes, I know, I forgot to film that part but just uh, look at this nice footage of riced cauliflower. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we can add in our seasonings. Start with some lime juice, some garlic powder, some chili powder. We like to use this chili powder blend. You can find the link below, but you can also just use regular chili powder. And here, as a good cook that I am, I decided to taste our mixture. And I thought it needed a bit of a kick. So I decided to throw in some of this Chipotle smoked red jalapeno powder. If you don't have any of this, you can just use cayenne, but link is in the description below to find this product. After tasting it again, I decided it needed even more chili powder, so I added in two more teaspoons. So after about 20 minutes, your filling should be done and your pepper should be ready to go. You will see that there is liquid in the bottom of them. Just go ahead and pour that out. It isn't necessary. Now on to our tomato sauce. This is my favorite part. It is a very simple tomato sauce. Just use one can of tomato sauce and then add in some smoked paprika, some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some oregano. Stir to combine and cover and heat up because if you don't cover it, it'll make a mess. And Jessica really, really hates messes. I like to fill the peppers with a generous amount of the filling mixture and then top it with a couple tablespoons of the tomato sauce. Holy crap, that is a lot of filling. Yeah, we have a lot of extra filling, but the good thing is it tastes great on a bunch of different recipes like tacos, nachos, salads, or you can just save it and use it for another round of peppers in the future. We were supposed to have eight peppers, but due to an incident, we only have seven. Jessica will be going through therapy to deal with it, but it could be years before she recovers. Now place your peppers back into the oven for five minutes. Don't forget to add Peef's peppers too. And once they are heated through and the sauce is once again hot on top, that's when you know that they are done. So you know I love my Pyrex storage bowls, and these are the seven cup version, actually, because I find that they're the only ones that are tall enough to store these in. I usually will put two or three into one container, and then we'll just take it to work and eat from it throughout the week. Or sometimes I like to get fancy and add a little extra filling along with just one pepper for an extra filling meal. We find that they'll keep in the refrigerator for up to about four days. So as you can see, that took a lot of prep work, but once it comes together, it all becomes very, very easy to make. And frankly, this is still one of my favorite things to have uh, for, you know, a non-soup kind of lunch throughout yeah, the week. We eat a lot of soup and Lots. chili, so this is a nice change from that. I like it because it's portable, it's all in a nice little package. My favorite part though is that you can customize with any kind of vegetables you want as far as that goes. If any you don't kind of like seasonings. Yeah, if you don't like something that we added, just don't add it and add whatever yeah. else you want to add. If you want it to be spicier, make it spicier. If you want it to have a different flavor profile, make it that. It is entirely up to you. This is just what we love to do and we think that we have come up with a very nice recipe. Yes. But wouldn't be much of a recipe video if we didn't at least try yes. it. So, uh, Jessica, do you want to do the honors? Sure. Cut the pepper? Sure. Let's see. Just go for it. Just cut it like Just go half. for it. Yeah. Ooh. And the other thing is, like, um, you can definitely, you know, as far as the peppers go, if you like your softer or a little bit more bite to them, you can, you know, adjust as needed. Yeah. So, you can cook them less, cook them more, roast them beforehand if you want to. Uh, I mean, there's so many options of how you can actually prepare this dish, but she <laughs> is being to, very, I'm trying. very methodical right now. I'm, usually I'm not like this when I cut. It's just random chaos. I'm being more, I'm doing more of a Brian here. Really? Um, but I feel like I want, I want to make sure we have a bite with everything in it. Well, you just got to cut a little slice, a little pie slice. I think this will work. Good. You think yes. you do that one? Yes. All right, there you go. As you can see, we like to plate it up with some extra filling, just for fun. All right, you ready? All right, you got a good bite there? I got a good bite, go. Let's do it. All right, what I love about that is that 
it's got a little bit of sweetness from the tomatoes. It's got a bit of heat coming from the, the seasonings and the spices in the background. Mm -hmm. It's got that pepper, which has a, a, like a nice, you know, pepper flavor. Like, a, you know, bell peppers taste really good to me. And then it just like sort of all mellows together with the tanginess of the tomato sauce on top. It's just, it is such a nice recipe and I'm so glad mm. that we developed this one. I remember when I first like made the tomato sauce that way and I put the seasoning in with everything else and when it all just came together, it was just like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I've done something good here. I think the smoked paprika really makes the sauce mm -hmm. because it's got that smoky flavor and to me, the tomato sauce is the best part. One of the latest additions that we added to the recipe was adding the tomato sauce into the filling mm -hmm. and that made a huge difference. So mm -hmm. I love the filling. Um, you know, as as we've talked about, we can use we use this filling on nachos, tacos, all yeah. kinds of other things. The so other thing it's is very that, versatile. Is that because we mixed the rice and the cauliflower rice together, mm -hmm. you get that sort of flavor and texture of rice, real rice, but you bulk it up with all of the cauliflower rice. Yeah. It just it I don't know, it's like magic almost to me. It almost makes mm -hmm. like the rest of the cauliflower rice taste like regular rice, like regular brown rice. I and just realized there's one thing missing from this. Oh yeah, forgot about that one. Queso! You didn't think I wasn't gonna put queso on this, did you? Mm. <laughs> Actually though, we, uh, we had this, uh, what, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks yes. ago, and put the queso on it for the first time, like this queso on top of it, and it was, it was, it was primo good. Keith was hiding a spoon. Muy bueno. So yes, I like the Good Foods queso, um, but you can use any of your, you know, homemade or store-bought plant-based quesos that you yep. like. We but are trying to develop our own cheese yes. sauce recipe. We will get around to that we eventually. We are going to have like, we're going to have to test out so many different yeah. recipes we and just, all we that. We only have so much time in a given day, yes. especially with work. So, so let's cut up, let's see, let's cut up a just, bit just more. Put the, put the queso on it and let's go. <laughs> let's cut up two more bites and then right. we'll, we'll load them queso. up with queso. 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 There you go. Now queso it up. All right. Queso on top. We actually like it cold on here. Yeah, you it's put the contrast. cold queso on top of the hot pepper and it's yeah. really, really good. All right, let's do that. Get a Go bite. for it. Get a you, bite. I, will, I will allow you to take the larger portion of the queso coverage because I love you. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's a big bite. I don't care. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -hmm. They, when you add the queso on top, just becomes amazing. Mm -hmm. Really, really good stuff. It but is really good. I think <laughs> what? we're going to finish this one off. So uh, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell that is right next to it. And you will get all of the updates for whenever we post a new video. Also find us on all of our social media platforms, but especially the Instagram. Jessica loves Instagram and she's constantly posting photos there and interacting with uh, you guys. You know, we, we see all the messages you guys send, so keep them coming. Uh, also check out the website for the blog post. that will have all of the ingredient amounts for this down in it, as well as some other maybe some tips and other little random things that we might have. But I think that's all I got. I think she wants more queso. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye-bye. Pete, seriously, eat up. <laughs>